Hello, wonderful universe. It's Jennifer here at Eureka Astrology and Healing. Today, it is video 11 of our Moon Mindfulness Challenge. It's January 25th, 2022, and today it is a Scorpio moon. It is waning. The energies are decreasing, but let me tell you, I am feeling the energy of Scorpio today. There's a lot of aspects happening and occurring um, with it, to it, around it, and I think it's being felt by everyone. Sometimes the moon in Scorpio has a little bit of a bad rap because things are so intense and can be almost a, not volatile, but just really intense. You know, Scorpio feels deeply and has a lot of power and the moon really reflects that throughout. And with this, you know, I want to remind everyone, join me if you enjoy this. See how these are affecting you, these moons. It changes so quickly and today I could really see the effects with the people around me and how I responded. And just to think about that a little bit, I've realized that when I tune into the moon on days where I don't have to be in the public so much, I am a little more calm and I'm not, not always, it's not always the easiest to tap into the moon or it takes me more time. But then when I have to go work with the public, I see it much more quickly in others being reflected to me, maybe my own emotions being reflected to me, but also how I can be reflected to others and I can see patterns in people more quickly. And it's kind of interesting to think about how the moon reflects. And then once I get to be around more people, I see those reflections much more quickly. Something to think about if you're doing this challenge. Is it easier for you to tap into these energies when you're alone or with others? But with that with being said, how have I experienced it today? Like I said, it's intense. I moved into, the moon moved into Scorpio yesterday and at first I didn't feel much, but then, like I said, I got out and about and worked with um, several people in the public. And one of my jobs is serving the public with um, herbs and supplements. And wow, I mean, all interactions were good and positive, but people were very, they had strong opinions. Uh, they, they really want, I think they were taking a hold of their power and were not backing down from things that they believed in. And I, I respected that completely. I know it was good just to witness that. And I wondered, like, had I resisted or, you know, said that, you know, I didn't believe that, you know, what would have happened? Because there were some, you know, people that, you know, some of my fellow coworkers experienced that had kind of sharp, intense reactions when they didn't get what they wanted, or it didn't seem like things were going their way. So, you know, it's interesting to think about holding space for all these energies and all the energies that are being reflected to us. I've also felt more compassionate. You know, I've been kind of, it's kind of been a playful day for me uh, personally, but I've also seen, like I said, some really kind of intense conversations and actions going on, but I just kind of feel playful yet compassionate for where people are at right now. And I think that's the main feeling that I have, which I'm grateful for. You know, Scorpio is a water sign, so it's got the feels. It's in the deepest feels. I mean, so does Capricorn. They're both, or not Capricorn, Cancer, pardon me. Cancer in the water sign, it's got the deep feels, but so does Scorpio. Scorpio digs deep and it digs and it digs and it digs and it tries to find where these emotions are coming from. So it's, it's very powerful. But other than that, I can say it's compassionate for me. So things to do on a Scorpio moon. Like I said, energies are definitely, since it's waning moon, cutting back, releasing, and taking stock of the things that you've done, and potentially with Scorpio. So one of the messages I got was to take stock in how your feelings can give you power. And it's something to sit with. Do your feelings and emotions that you have on a day-to-day -day basis, but especially in these two and a half days, are they empowering you to be in your power? Not getting power from someone else or others trying to control power over you, like, or, but finding that power. But then the next thing I was going to say is that do you look for power in others and try and take it from others? Are you finding your power from without and not within? And sometimes emotionally, if especially the Scorpio moon, if it feels like it is not maybe so much in control, and in this case, because you're not standing in power, right? Because true power, know, true power knows it cannot control. It cannot control everything. But if there's that fear that can come with it sometimes that you need to control to know, and just, like I said, to know what's next, you know, there can be a reach for power, trying to take it from others or exerting your own over others. So I think it's really good to take stock in how your feelings and emotions are really working in your life for you. And hopefully you're finding that the way you respond emotionally in general 
gives you power, gives you strength, and lets you know, I am powerful in my own right, and I don't need to take it or exert it over others. The next thing I was thinking about, and I really tried to take stock of, do detective work. Scorpio, like I said, digs deep, and it is great at finding the clues. It's the Sherlock Holmes. It is getting in there and finding out. And so this could be different for everybody in the area of your life. Again, your chart is unique and where Scorpio falls in your chart is unique. So wherever that area is, if you know a little bit about astrology, that's the place to dig deep. But just in general, if you have a feeling like I need to find out more about my health, what's going on with my health, I need to find out more about what's going on with my emotions. I need to find out more about what's going on with, say, work even. I need to dig deeper to find out what's causing maybe some things that seem a little secretive or elusive, just like, you know, almost subconscious below. Do the digging, you know, obviously safely, but do some digging. I think it's a good time to find some answers. And just sitting with what the answers are, because sometimes Scorpio unearths things that We've pushed down for a reason because it's maybe too painful or hard, um, painful and hard, either something that could happen to us or also things that maybe we've done and we don't fully know how to integrate, you know, shadow self, you know, it's a good time to do some shadow work, obviously with a proper teacher and guide. If you're not trained, it's um, really deep work, but it's really meaningful work, but always with safety and protection. So then what else did I think about here? This is an interesting statement. Release and transform dead emotions. Scorpio is all about transformation and death and rebirth. As many know, death is not in the end, or at least I should say believe. Um, knowing is a little bit different, but there for many seems to be something more. And we can see that mimicked every day in life. You know, life feeds off life. When someone kills a plant and then cooks it and eats it, they get life again. The same with an animal. The same with leaves falling off a tree and, you know, the dead rotting wood from fun and fungus eating it. There's this cycle going on here, continuous death and rebirth. And so I, I said dead emotions and I thought about emotions that, not that they're bad and not that you're dead inside. It's emotions that no longer nurture or support growth, positive growth. And so kind of looking through and saying, oh, that emotion or that feeling, that feeling is old and outdated it served me well at a time but it's time to let it go because once you let it go it can compost and then nurture the soil and grow into something new again so it's a great time to let go of as I said those dead feelings and emotions with that I think those are great things to do you don't want to overwhelm yourself doing one of those things is enough it's deep work it's transformative work if you're willing to do it then the aspects. There are a ton of aspects, and I think this is what I've been feeling, is it's just happened today for sure. So the first thing is don't regard the moon, because I'm always trying to do things, like I said, in real time, but also regarding the moon's aspects to the moon, the moon aspecting to things. But these two things need to be mentioned. Mars just moved into Capricorn, and then Mercury also just retrograded, but moved into Capricorn. So it's kind of a Capricorn party here. With Mars moving in, it is at home, it is enjoying itself. I should say it's like an honored guest, really, in, in the Capricorn. And it is getting things done. It is consistent, it is powerful, it is strong, and it has energy to go and do. So people are probably feeling a little bit of a bip in their step and starting to really want to hunker down into the things that they want to get done. Like, yeah, I have the energy, I have the stamina to do this, and I am going for it. So, you know, this is going to be a great energy for a little while here to take advantage of. And I think this is largely what some people are feeling. And then Mercury was in Capricorn for a while, left and went into Aquarius, but now it's back in revisiting. And the first thing it's going to hit is Pluto. And Pluto is near its end of its journey. I mean, it's still got quite some time, but in Capricorn. And so like rethinking again, where there needs to be transformation with authority and structure and potential responsibility and duties in the world. And again, it's depending on where it's in your chart, but it's revisiting something that it had already touched upon once. And it will go over it again, and then you can kind of move forward with what you have thought about and you know revisited and made a decision on. It's like, all right, this is what I really want to do. And so I just wanted to put that out there. The other two things that are still in Capricorn, Venus, and, and as I said, Pluto. So it's a heavy um, Capricorn time. So lots of transformation with that. Lots of assessing because Venus is also retrograde. So two planets retrograding. Um, it's just, well, 
really intense, but it's a great time to look at, again, authority, structure, and responsibilities. And, you know, I think when we come out of this, we'll have a whole new idea of what we want to be doing and what we want to be responsible for and what we want to have from our uh, the authoritarian structures that we are partaking in or are around us. And that being said, lots of aspects. There are three what we call more tenuous aspects. The moon in Scorpio is squaring the sun today. And the message I got was fixed feelings versus fixed thoughts. Um, there may be a lot of deep feels and def definitely like feeling I want to connect deeply with another on a one-on-one -on -one basis, like really like deeply in mesh where you know, Aquarius is a little aloof. It's like, ah, you know, I want to help. I want to serve. I like connecting to people on more of a surface friendship level, but like do not get into my personal space. I want some alone time. So like there's a little bit of a clash of like, come here and leave me alone kind of. So that's kind of the overall energy, like feeling one thing and shining a light on another. So, you know, be kind to anybody in your life if they are the opposite energy or have this tenacious energy with you. This will pass quickly. Um, the moon is opposed Uranus as well today and Uranus is in Taurus. And I thought fixed materials or the things that you have versus fixed emotions. And so I wonder if that this is Uranus is shaking things up in Taurus. It's really plowing things through and I think making things feel a little unsteady in Taurus, especially about what we have and what we, you know, what we need to go forward in this world on a material plane and also um, as, a, as the gifts we have to the world. And so with the moon opposing it, there's a feeling of wanting to deeper, deeply connect where Uranus is like, you know, right now we're busy re reconstructing, you know, the, the ground beneath us. So the connection may not feel totally stable. And there may be a lot of erratic kind of feelings today because Uranus brings about change, brings about a little bit of tension, but it brings around the change that needs to happen. So maybe there's an emotional change that needs to happen for somebody and it's based upon what they can bring to the table and their self-worth versus what, you know, a group of people or two people can have and build and grow together. So definitely some interesting energies. You know, I'll be curious to see how that plays out in the world. The other tense aspect is the moon is squaring Saturn. So again, Saturn's in Aquarius. And I just think again, like, you know, Scorpio wants to deeply connect and Saturn and Aquarius is like, oh, but you know, quit cuddling over there, quit getting romantic, quit going into this deepness. We have bigger things to do. Get out here, be responsible. So again, a tension of more leadership and kind of maybe even like a leader who likes to stay alone and, and not connect so deeply with people and more of an thinking, airy feeling, not a feeling. So thoughts versus emotions, you know, they can live together. And just finding that balance and how they play out is, you know, unique to everybody. There are some positive aspects as well, or I should say, um, they call them, you know, easier aspects. And so it's, you know, takes a little tension off. And the moon today is trying Jupiter in Pisces. And I just think with all this tension and, you know, wildness going on and these deep feelings, it's just like this heightened sense of love. I feel like this deep connection to source and the, the love connection to source is really felt today. And that makes me happy. Um, Jupiter's just expanding Pisces, you know, connection to all, you know, and it's just, like I said, I, it feels really good, like love to me, but love in highest expression. And it'd be a great day to create something and it could be even emotionally driven, but really creating a beautiful piece of art or music or poetry or dance for the, you know, great spirit, really, or God or, you know, whatever you worship or you don't believe in. The other aspect is moon is sextile Venus in retrograde. And I was trying to think about that. And I feel like the desire, like the emotions are coming through and helping digging deep and finding the emotional core of the self in these few days. And maybe what is kind of driving, <laughs> driving the being underneath, especially emotionally and with feelings. When that gets found, I think it's going to help Venus understand what it wants again with responsibility and authority I think digging into those emotions are, and finding them and those feelings is going to help as Venus is reassessing 
what it wants, it's going to find that. It's like, you know, this is where my power is, you know, finding your power in this moon. And then, you know, this is my power. How do I want it to play out in the greater world, especially with what I'm doing, you know, as a responsibility, but also how others, the rules around me, let's say this that gently, the, the rules around me, like, are these rules that I live by? Are these rules that work with my power and my source? And I'm not saying to go break laws, but there are sometimes laws that don't fit in spiritually with others and just trying to figure out how you can fit that in. I think it's a great time for that. And I think this is going to be a really powerful transformation as the planets move out of Capricorn. But right now there's a lot of work being done. With that being said, thank you for joining me today. If you like what I'm doing, visit my website at eurekaastrologyandhealing.com. And with that, join me if you'd like. Ciao for now.